Hey guys, this is Thomas from Stylized Station, and today I'm going to be showing you my go-to, my go-to setup for stylized objects, where you can take this and turn it into something like this. Now this is a much, much, much better setup, in my opinion, for more stylized and cartoony objects. Um, it really emphasizes certain parts of it, gives us this stylized, cartoony look. Now, the previous one actually would work pretty well for very natural and realistic looking um, hard surface objects. However, I think when you're showing off a stylized object, this is the way to go, and it's super simple and super easy. So let me show you how to do it. Okay, here we are in our Pharmacet scene. We've got the texture and the object all imported, and this is kind of how it looks right now, right from the start. You can see it's in, not very impressive. It's not showing off any of the geometry. It's just flat and boring. So the first thing we need to understand when setting up a really good um, render in Marmoset is the positioning of the camera in relation to the object. So basically what you want to do is you want to emphasize strong points of the object um, and also manipulating the camera in a way that it almost adds a sort of feeling um, and a sense of intensity, uh, uh, sadness, whatever you're trying to get out of the render. So basically this is just more of moving things around and trying to figure out where everything's going to go. So naturally my eye wants to lean towards the front of the object here. So I think what we're going to do is maybe just move it around here and show it off somewhere like this. This kind of brings the actual front to the forefront to show it off a little bit while also showing off the silhouette of the object still with no issue. If you see if we can we can move it back here to the render, but you can kind of see like the whole feel of the image is lost and the feel of the object from what it is. It almost looks like a submarine or something. Um, then compared to say this or this, where it almost looks like a train coming at you. So I like this. We're gonna stick with something around this somewhere in this position. So the next step is let's go ahead and set our focus. So since we've got something in the foreground, we can also um, kind of put more emphasis on this front end by messing with the um, field of view and the depth of field. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the focus and select depth of field and as you can see it goes blurry because the fir f focus distance isn't set to the right point. So as we move this further back and further forward, different parts of the object are coming into focus. So what we want to do is we want to get it up into the front here to focus on this frontal area. Now. We can also mess the aperture and um, the blur to make sure that the back still actually has some level of emphasis. So this is the first step, depth of field. We're going to drop the near blur to zero just in case there's any blurring in the front. And then we can drop the far blur a little bit more just so it's the parts are more recognizable at this point. You can kind of see the detail of the, um, of the window and the chair, but um, it's still blurred and far enough away so that it still puts the emphasis in the front. So I'm going to drop the size of everything. That looks nice. Something like that. That's that's pretty good for me. Now the next thing we can really mess with is the colors um, of the object and the background. So let's let's change the background first. So we're going to go into sky and the presets are very important as well. So let's choose something that kind of reflects the light properly. This this scene seems to be way too dark. So let's hop over here. That looks good. We're not getting great reflection on anything. This is starting to look a little better. Let's try Desert Road. There we go. So that really brings out the colors of the object. And it's a nice white color, so it's not kind of it's not flushing in anything else as well, like the green, which is actually adding quite a bit of green to this. As I cycle through these, I'm really starting to like Desert Road quite a bit, especially this angle here. But we've got a few options. Again, the green is flushing it out. This is going to be too dark, if you ask me. That's OK, but I think the white is getting oversaturated in this. And let's try Glacier, because this one has a nice color. Hmm. I'm going to have to go with Desert Road for now. 
I like it. Beautiful, and we don't need this distracting background in the way it's taking away from the objects. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch the mode to color, and then we're going to select the color. Now, since this object is yellow, we should probably use a complementary color. So we're going to click here to select the color, and then the color panel picker pops up. The colored panel picker pops up, and we can select the color. Now, I would typically go with a blue like this, maybe drop it down, have a little darker and cycle through the colors and as you can see none of them really make sense that doesn't look terrible but once you hit the blue area something suddenly feels bright and that's because it is a complementary color and it's 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 naturally going to work with the yellow so let's maybe pop it a little more here i like it down here yes i like it just like that now the next thing we're going to tackle is now that we've got the color done um, is we're going to tackle the kind of giving it of a more stylized look. Now this right now kind of looks realistic um, in a way. It's kind of it's got a stylized look but there is still quite a bit of realism to it such as the um, wear on here. It, it just it looks real in the lighting on here so I have a couple of steps to fix this and give it more of a cartoony look. So it's all done through here mostly so First one is the sharpen. So you have to be careful with the sharpen because it is going to mess with your um, your blur in the background. But if you get it to a, a good enough point where it just starts to bring out the details, like here, then I think you're good. We can probably fix this as well. But I like it, let's say right here. And you can normally leave the limit where it is. Next is bloom. Now we don't want to add too much bloom, but just a little bit, just so it, um, starts to add a bit of style to the image as well. So let's go up a little bit until we hit about here. This is basically the threshold where we want to hit. So as you start going any higher and the image gets really flushed out. But right here kind of adds almost like a whimsical whimsical uh, fog and edge to it. Now the next um, is the vignette. I think that's how you pronounce it. Vignette, vignette, whatever. Um, this is basically going to add uh, a lighting pull into the object, so we're going to go ahead and slowly move this up until we find a spot where we feel it's right, and I'd say about here. Now since this is this the vignette is also darkening the image, we also should maybe counteract this by raising the color. So we're going to go back to sky, and I can pull this back up and pull up the saturation just a little bit, just to bring some of that color back, and that's looking really good. So now that that looks pretty good to me, I think we're good. Um, we're going to add one more step. Let's do one more. And that is going to be to add a bit of a fog to it, add a almost volumetrics to your image. And again, it's going to add on to the bloom to create a, almost like a whimsical, whimsical effect. So we're going to click on fog in the top corner. And as you can see, it's really flushed out. This one's going to work. So we can increase the distance a bit. And we're going to drop the opacity. And we just want to hit a point where it is um, kind of where it just starts to come into effect, which is normally 0.123. So let's go to zero and see what happens. Yep, that works too. Zero 0.5. Mm, still a little much. 0 0.03. Mm, maybe 0 0.01. That looks pretty good to me. It's barely, barely noticeable, um, but it is different from zero. Noticeably noticeably so maybe not really but the point is um, with this image it might not work very well however with most of my images I do add up uh, I do add or end up adding fog to it but I think this looks pretty good this is a great spot to end the video uh, this was just supposed to be a quick one to give you an overview of everything but here we are you can mess around with the angle a bit now that we've got the basic idea set up so you can start moving it um, over here, over here, trying to get some more angle shots, whatever you need, but for now, I like this spot right here, just like this. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you've made it all the way to the end, that probably means that you enjoyed the video. So if you haven't already, please remember to subscribe and like and comment 
uh, tell me what you thought of the tell me what you thought of the video. You know, these are new, and it's always great to receive constructive criticism and feedback from you guys, positive or negative. I'm making these videos for you, so I want to make sure that these are the highest quality possible. Again, guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.